Okay, guys, so uh, it's been a few days. Been reading up on some news, crazy stories coming out. Um, but the one I want to talk about is what's going on in Chicago right now. Now, if you're unfamiliar, uh, Friday, Saturday, last weekend, there was this huge teen uproar where hundreds of teens decided to just cause pure chaos and havoc throughout um, different areas of Chicago. Mainly was the downtown region, which, um, you know, they destroyed vehicles. Um, there was gunshots. There was armed robberies. There was abuse. And uh, we'll see a little bit right here. Some breaking news off the top. Hundreds of teens flooding into downtown Chicago tonight, smashing car windows, trying to get into Millennium Park, prompting a major police response. Within the past few minutes, shots were fired near the corner of Madison and Michigan. Now, we had a news crew on the scene, but they had to move because of safety concerns. <laughs> well, no, duh. If you see all of these kids running around, causing chaos, smashing windows, gunshots, I would move too. I was there a little bit earlier, about an hour and a half ago, and saw police escorting tourists and visitors to their cars in the Millennium Park parking garage. The crowd was trying to get into Millennium Park, but there are checkpoints that are not allowing anyone under the age of 21 who's not with an adult to get in. So they're massing across the street on the other side of Michigan Avenue. I spoke to a woman whose car was smashed by people jumping on the windshield. She says the crowd began beating her husband as he sat in the driver's seat. He's now been that's crazy you're just sitting in your car trying to get home or go somewhere downtown chicago all of a sudden your car swarmed by a bunch of kids they break your window and now they're punching you like what and sent to northwestern memorial hospital i also talked to a woman a chicago native who was appalled by what she saw Hundred percent agree. This is hundred percent bad parenting, you know. But I don't think it helps when you have the former mayor Lightfoot and the new mayor elect Brandon Johnson basically saying what these kids were doing wasn't one mayhem, and two we shouldn't we shouldn't demonize it. Now the new mayor elect Brandon Johnson did say we shouldn't condone this type of behavior, and so did I guess Lightfoot in a sense. But they both are, are basically saying, like, one, these kids were not doing anything crazy, and two, like, we shouldn't hold them accountable in a sense or demonize them for their behavior. Like, listen to this. City leaders are vowing to do more to protect the community from wild incidents like what took place at Millennium Park this weekend. On Saturday, a large group of teens crowded downtown streets around Millennium Park. Some of them jumped on cars, smashing windows. Two teens were even shot. Police made 15 arrests. Mayor Lightfoot says uh, Pete CPD has assured her they're making adjustments to make sure. She also stated that majority of the people that were going downtown were just there to have a good time. Sure, this does not happen again. The vast majority of the young people who came downtown came downtown because it was a great um, weather and an opportunity to enjoy the city. That's absolutely entirely appropriate. Um, there are a few that came with different intentions, and they have, they have. There was a few, a few that came with different intentions. I don't know about that. From the videos I saw, it was a huge swath of people. They will be dealt with. Um, but I'm not going to um, use your language, which I think is um, wrong, uh, to say that it's mayor. Mayor elect Brandon Johnson said that he does. You don't think if you need to call police to this degree, corral uh, visitors who are coming to Chicago, tourists, all these people to an underground parking lot because there's gunshots, wild teens running around, stomping and breaking vehicles, and all this, that that's not considered mayhem? And then, like I said, the new mayor elect, he says, in no way do I condone the destructive activity that we saw on the loop and lakefront this weekend. However, it is not constructive to demonize youth who have otherwise been starved of opportunities in their own communities. Uh, it looks like they don't really care about their own communities.
why are they going around breaking into uh i think they broke into a walgreens they're trying to break into other places they're smashing up people's property they're just causing cat havoc and this story here was really really sad um basically the cops told this woman who who was a good samaritan helped this young couple here try to get some of their back on their feet who are who were visiting chicago as well they were going back i, th I believe back to their airbnb was attacked by this huge mob it was just absolutely random we didn't know anybody we were just trying to walk through a group so of this people. girl here caught up is right here and look at the swarm of of young men and young women these teenagers just attacking her watch this group of people Caught up in a mob, two out-of-towners sharing their story after being beaten by teens downtown on Saturday. A key part of the story, the Good Samaritan who stepped in to help. Now, you're telling me that's not mayhem? You're telling me that a few of these kids were just going down there to enjoy the weather? Come on now. And then this is what the lady who helped him out said. I literally went out into the street and stop and held my hands up to a police car and asked them to stop and motion them over to what was going on and they just cut a path around me and just kept going. She was eventually able to get the couple into her car, then she drove them to the police station. I uh, got told by the desk sergeant that this was going to happen, it was going to keep happening because Brandon Johnson got elected. That floored me. An ambulance then took them to the hospital, but the couple was without their phones, wallets, and shoes. Look, look at this scene right here. Whole row of cops here. These kids don't give a shit. They are literally just running, throwing stuff. They're, I believe they broke, I don't know if it's this bus in particular, but they smashed the, the bus's windows. They punched one of the bus drivers through that broken window. Uh, like just pure chaos. This is mayhem. And the former mayor saying, I wouldn't, I'm not going to use that term. Which had all been stolen during the attack. I told um, them, told the couple that I was going to go home to find them some shoes so that they wouldn't be barefoot for the rest of the night. Her name is Lenore. Wow. She well, gave us shoes, took her, us home, took us to the hospital. Her husband as well. Thank you. Let's do on the others. And and that's a, a mantra that I live by every day is just do on the others as you would have them do on you. And and now the question is who's in charge here? As this clip goes to explain that apparently they are planning for a part 2 of this whole situation this weekend coming up. So let's take a watch of this. But first, the question a lot of people are asking after teens ran rampant downtown this weekend is who is in charge? If we have that convention and, and violence is allowed uh, to reign on our streets once again, we can't afford to take that chance. One city council veteran warns that outbursts of downtown violence like we saw last weekend threatened to do enormous damage to Chicago's tourism and hospitality industry. It was the city's largest private employer before the pandemic. Who, who wants to go to Chicago if this is potentially what you're going to have to worry about once the weather starts to get a little bit warm and kids start to go out again? Because this is essentially what Lightfoot was saying was that this was a nice weekend. The weather finally cleared up. It was warm enough. People went out and about. But they have nothing to do because there's no programs for the kids. There's... When I was younger and I went out, I made things to do, but not like this. I wasn't destructive. I wasn't crazy. I wasn't going around breaking things or beating up people or shooting them. You go to the park. You go... You know, hang out with your friends. You go hang out at the mall. You do something. But definitely not this. Late at night. And a mob of, of kids just running rampant and, and making causing destruction. This doesn't make any sense. Political editor Mike Flannery joins us now with more. Michael? Anthony and Natalie, Alderman Brian Hopkins notes the social media that summoned hundreds of young people to three consecutive nights of chaos last Thursday, Friday, and Saturday are now promising a part two this weekend. Alderman Ray Lopez says police cannot afford to be taken by surprise again. 
And it was a complete breakdown of leadership in the department for not having a plan, not knowing how to execute containment, and not getting those individuals who were committed to acts of violence and disrupting life in the city of Chicago, extricating them from the situation. Look, look at this. This guy's burning out in front of the cops. Now, I will say, obviously, with the amount of people that were there, the cops could only deal with so many, but the extremely violent ones or stuff like that, you should be able to deal with. The 15th Ward's Lopez and other officials say that since police lacked enough manpower to arrest organizers of the violence last weekend, there are now posts such as this on social media boasting that part two will uh, convene this Saturday at various points downtown. Uh, the downtown second Ward's Brian Hopkins notes that tens of thousands of jobs are at stake in hotels, restaurants, and entertainment ve uh, venues, many of whose patrons are already reluctant to come downtown, especially in the evening. He wants police and state's attorney Kim Fox to use every tool they have. And those tools have to include a willingness to arrest and prosecute dangerous, violent offenders when they engage in mob activity that causes harm and injury to other people. Uh, they did loot the Walgreens at one point on State and Madison. Uh, we know about the injuries. We know at least four shots fired incidents uh, resulted in, in two gunshot victims, one age 16 and one age 17. Uh, a lot of armed robberies, a lot of strong armed robberies, and several police officers injured, by the way, that's crazy. And I think it all ties back to what this lady said. Our kids should not be out here. Where are any parents at? That's my question. Again, I'm not going to boil it all down to parents, but I don't know. If my parent, if I was at their age and my parent found out I was one of these kids... Man, oh man, would I have got an ass whooping. I would never have thought of doing this because I would know the repercussions that would come with this. Anyways, as always, you guys let me know what you think about this craziness, and I'll catch you on the next one.